Good everything and welcome back to Tesla's Wild. Today I'm pretty damn excited because we're going to start a new series where we design and build a solar home charger for my Tesla Model 3. going to cover in this episode is basically the overall design of the system, the motivations for doing this, as well as a fun little prototype or project that you can do at home. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you stay tuned and we'll get right into the it. The first motivation has to do with pollution. We all know that Teslas don't immediately pollute like ICE vehicles do. There's no internal combustion, there's no combustion products, so there's no emissions being produced directly by the Tesla. However, home chargers are hooked into the electric power grid and in Colorado there's quite a bit of renewable energy, but there's also quite a bit more of coal, natural gas, and petroleum. Secondly, in my last video, we talked a little bit about exchanging the glass roof for a set of solar panels, and it just didn't really seem all that viable. Third has to do with cost. We all know that there's existing solutions like Tesla Solar, Tesla Powerwall. The only problem with these is that they're very, very expensive and we should be able to design and build one for quite a bit less. That brings me to my last point. This is going to be a fun design and engineering challenge. In the end, we'll hopefully have a comprehensive, efficient, effective, and safe solar charging system for my Tesla Model 3. The overall design of the system is actually going to be extremely simple. This does not include everything that goes in between each of the main components, but overall, we're going to need three three things. First of all, we're going to need a way to gather the power. This is obviously the solar panels that we're going to need to use to collect power from the sun. Now, we're going to need a place to store this energy. I can't be home while this is charging because it's obviously during the day. I have a job. I'm working all day, and that is when this is going to be primarily producing energy. So we've got to store this somewhere, somehow. So this means that we're going to have to design a battery pack. Finally, we're going to need a way to get the power from the battery pack into the Tesla. So this is the primary design of the system. It's three major components. The rest in between we're going to get into in later episodes. The batteries need to have an effective operating temperature, so we might have to install heaters, but these are all things we're going to explore in future episodes. Right now we're just talking about the overall design of this system. Now that we've gone over that, let's get into a small little prototype that you can build at home to simulate this sort of system and use the power to charge smaller electronics like your cell phone, iPad, or anything like that. When I started this project, I really had no idea where to begin. I knew I needed to use a solar panel and some batteries, but that was about it. So I started searching under Google's for solar-powered battery chargers as there was no reason to reinvent the wheel. One design constraint I wanted to throw on this little project was that it needed to use some lithium-ion batteries known as 18650s. Once I filtered on this constraint, there were really only two options, and one of them was particularly suited for this application. Now that we had found the correct starting point for our design, we just had to order the parts required. This included a 6 watt 6 volt solar panel by Voltaic, a dual 18650 battery pack wired in series which would become a major headache, a TP4056 protection circuit that protects the batteries against any sort of anomalies that could cause what is known as thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is a violent exothermic chain reaction that often concludes with a catastrophic failure and we've all heard about the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Next, we got an MT3608 boost circuit that is capable of boosting, or stepping, an input voltage to a desired output voltage. Next, we got a 5 volt 2 amp boost circuit. And finally, just as an extra precaution, I ordered some digital voltmeters that I could wire into the system in order to be able to monitor the battery voltage and or the voltage being produced by the solar panel. Now that we had all of the parts on the way, the next step was creating a wiring diagram. If there's one thing I learned in the single electrical engineering course required for my degree in mechanical engineering, it's that wiring diagrams are absolutely essential and can help point out problems before they even occur. So we drew up a wiring diagram and slightly modified it to have two switches instead of one so we could more finely control the charge versus power modes. After receiving all of the parts and having a wiring diagram, I was off to the races. Using my wiring diagram, I wired up the second switch in the battery pack, connected the battery pack to the TP4056, the TP4056 to the MT3608, and the MT3608 to the 5V 2A boost circuit. Everything was looking pretty darn solid at this point, and I may have been slightly overconfident, but you'll find out pretty soon. After wiring the prototype up, it quickly became apparent that this system was a mess visually. There were circuit boards and wires everywhere, and this seemed to pose a risk of crossing wires or causing a short. So getting more into my forte, I took to CAD software known as SOLIDWORKS to design a holder for all of the components besides the solar panel. 
One of my favorite hobbies in my free time is 3D printing. I've been fascinated by it for a long time, and I regularly print toys, puzzles, prototypes, and more for projects I am working on or just for fun. So once we had the CAD model complete, I sent it off to be printed by my 3D printer, and in about an hour, we produced the base to hold all of our components. The only color I had was pink, so what, fucking deal with it. Now that I had the entire system completely wired up and a nice base to put all of the parts in, I assembled everything and it all came together beautifully. I finally had the first revision of this prototype completed. So I connected the solar panel and started to monitor the battery voltage and literally nothing happened. After flipping the switches a few more times, an LED finally flashed rather rapidly before shutting off following a small pop. Small pops are never a good sign in electronics and usually indicate some sort of short or failure. So this revision was a total failure, unfortunately, and I had to go back to the drawing board. At this point, I was out of ideas. Like I said, this stuff is not my forte, but I'm hoping as this project progresses, it will become easier and easier. Luckily, my mom's boyfriend is a retired electrical engineer and thoroughly enjoys troubleshooting, so I enlisted his help. Whenever you have a problem like this, a great place to start is the spec sheets for the circuits you are using. The biggest problem with this initial design became immediately apparent. The original DIY tutorial was only designed for a single 18650, whereas I was trying to work with two in series. 18650s have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, and two of them in series should be around 7.4 volts. It turns out that the TP4056 protection circuit has a maximum input voltage of around 5 volts, so I was well exceeding that with this battery pack. So we needed to redesign the battery pack. The next change that we wanted to implement was removing the second switch. It turns out that the TP4056 is smart enough to know where the power is coming from and where it should send it to. Finally, we determined that the MT3608 was basically redundant. The 5V 2A boost circuit did everything we needed and even had the USB out to go with it. At this point, we thought we knew all of the problems involved with this original design, so we just had to go in and fix them. Again, a wiring diagram is always a good addition to any project like this, so we created a new wiring diagram with the changes described previously. I started by converting the series battery pack into a parallel battery pack. Second, I removed the second switch so that now there was only one switch and it was on the positive terminal of the battery. Finally, I deleted the MT3608 boost circuit as it was redundant for this application and we really only required the 5V 2Amp boost circuit. Now that we had our rewired prototype with one less chip, the original base would have looked slightly funny as it had an extra pocket that was now empty due to the deleted MT3608. So I had to go back into SolidWorks and redesign the base with only two pockets for the TP4056 and the 5V 2Amp boost circuits. Luckily, this was pretty quick, and this time I decided to print it using a flexible filament called TPU. In retrospect, this probably wasn't the best idea, but I chose it primarily because I had it in a much cooler color. Oh well, trade-offs I guess. All that was left to do was put it all together and start running the system through some tests to see if it actually did what it was designed to do. This is what I'm going to show you now, a completely functional DIY dual 18650 solar powered phone or small electronics charger or the DD18650 SPPOSEC for short. So if we flip this switch, we're going to see this voltmeter turn on, reading the voltage coming from these batteries in parallel. I apologize, it's probably flashing across the screen right now, but you can see that it's reading 3.78 volts. So we are able to plug in our phone and charge directly off of these batteries at this point. So if we plug in our USB into the 5 volt 2 amp boost circuit here and plug our phone into the other end, we can see that it immediately starts charging and we have the green for charging in the right upper corner. So now we see that battery mode works very well. What we need to do now is check out solar mode. Hi Leonard. All right, so at this point we're gonna plug in our solar panel. Of course this decided to come apart right as I'm filming this video. It's been good for like six days and now it decided to come apart. So we plug in our solar panel, we see some LEDs come in on the TP4056 protection circuit, and with this switch flipped in the opposition, we are now reading a voltage directly from the solar panels itself. So we can see that the solar panel is producing around 3.7, 3.6 volts. So like I said, we can charge the phone directly on solar power, and if we plug on in, we see the battery starts charging, and it is confirmed. Finally, we're going to use solar power to charge these batteries. So now if we flip this switch into the on position, we're going to get a reading directly from the battery. 
So you see that it's laid out and is much more consistent and it's reading around 3.80, 3.81 volts. So at this point, we are charging the battery via solar power. So this is the overall ultimate design of the system. It's gonna need solar panels, a battery pack, protection circuitry, and a way to get the power to our Tesla. All right, so there you guys have it. There's a little fun project or prototype to simulate this overall system. It's just scaled down quite a bit. You can use this to charge quite a few different electronics. The overall prototype costs somewhere around 60 to $70, but you can get it for quite a bit less. I bought one of the more expensive solar panels just because I suck at soldering. Is What are we gonna cover in upcoming episodes of this series? At least in the next episode, what we're gonna start looking at is the overall design of the system in more detail. So we need to start looking at things like how many solar panels do we need to produce the power that we need or the energy that we need? How do we need to size our battery pack so that it can store enough power? And then from there, we need to start looking at exactly how we're gonna get the power from the solar panels to the battery pack and from the battery pack to the test in a safe, effective manner. So that's what's coming in upcoming episodes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Should be an absolute blast, a really fun project that will get this car completely off of the grid and producing literally zero emissions when we're looking at charging and driving. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash that like and subscribe button down below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. As always, I've got a lot of new content coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned and we'll see you guys next video.